All right, everyone. We start off today talking about the crisis in Haiti. Um, it's getting worse and worse. It, it appears to be a death spiral and could completely destabilize Haiti. So you could see them go from mostly destabilized to literally no functional government. That's close to where they are now. And they've been going back and forth between heavily dysfunctional, corrupt, but you know, for the most part, there's only a little bit of actual violence and, and chaos to absolute chaos and terror um, over and over again now for a number of years, of course. You know, remember the Haiti earthquake many years ago crippled most of the infrastructure that did exist in, in the country. It was already impoverished. You already had food scarcity. You already had gang activity. You already had narcos. The, the whole nine yards, anything that could go wrong was already going wrong. Then their infrastructure collapsed, and then the government collapsed too. Now, this is an interesting article. Link in the description. Archived, of course. Uh, this is an op-ed by Daniel Foote. Now, most of you have probably not heard of him. He was Biden's special envoy to Haiti during the, la the most recent wave of crisis there prior to the one that they're currently going through. And he was, he was the one that was in charge of trying to make sure that Haiti uh, recovered back to its old, just generally dysfunctional norm as opposed to more and more dysfunctional non-norm. And he quit after three months. And the reason why, and this is why he penned the op-ed here, uh, is because uh, he, he realized that Biden had effectively, in his words, made a deal with the devil. The idea was that in the lead up to the election, you had a shit ton of Haitian migrants clogging the border, and it was becoming a PR problem for the Biden administration. And this is true. I mean, th that's beyond debate. Uh, you'll remember whenever Biden go went somewhere, they would clear out the migrants beforehand and shuffle them off to the next overpass. And even some liberals, by the way, did chuff at that. They, they thought, well, you know, <laughs> that's a little bit low, uh, although they didn't castigate him uh, hard enough for it. Anyway, the idea is that the current dictator in charge of Haiti was effectively expedited in that process and put into that position in exchange for them re repatriating a bunch of Haitian migrants. So Biden rounded up the Haitians and sent them back to Haiti, which is kind of unique because for the most part, we no longer have a deportation system. We have a, we take your fingerprints, we take your name that may or may not be re uh, real, and then we release you. It's catch and release effectively like it was under the Obama era, only worse now. Um, it's interesting that that one group of people was extradited back to their home country and the home country took them. It does seem a little bit odd now. That, that doesn't really happen with any of these other countries. They all don't want the, the migrants back. Um, they, they don't want to deal with the, the issue. And they don't get deported. And the, for the U.S. government never wants to deport them. What Foote is saying effectively is that Biden minted a U.S. pawn in Haiti in exchange for a, a PR campaign <laughs> with regards to a bunch of migrants. I believe it. Again, this is coming from the envoy appointed by Biden that was explicitly in charge of the situation. What's happening now is that they're even necklacing people. Uh, if you haven't heard what that is, essentially you, you tie someone to a tire and then you douse the tire with kerosene and you light it on fire. And it can take minutes to die. And then the person will be sitting there immobilized because their muscles stop working because of the heat. And they're still clearly alive, breathing in flame until they fucking die. Sometimes uh, I'm assuming that the cause of death generally is your brain starts to heat up and just stops working. So a sweet release at that point. Uh, this is this is sub third world uh, levels of violence that you currently have in Haiti. And again, the uh, special envoy from years ago is claiming that Biden had a chief role in doing so. The idea is that the person was put in and didn't deserve the position. In order to secure that deal, you take someone and you simply speed them through the process as quickly as possible. The fact that they're a criminal, which the leader of Haiti is, along with every other member of their government, basically, they're all corrupt uh, and money-grubbing, don't really care about their people, and they wield power in an extreme authoritarian fashion. There's not much in the way of human rights in Haiti anyway, even if it weren't for the gangs and shit making it impossible to go down the street, and even if there were food, you'd still have a corrupt dictatorship, a de facto dictatorship, or at least an oligarchic system. The people of Haiti didn't get any say in that. Uh, they keep pledging that there will be an election. Who cares? 
At this point, I mean, the one thing that the envoy glosses over here and doesn't mention is the fact that even if they did replace their dictator with a free and fair election, who the fuck's going to run? Corrupt people. They're the only ones that have any expendable money to actually campaign. You'd end up with the head of a narco group, some military general, and, you know, a corrupt businessman that wants to sell Haiti out to China or the U.S. or someone else. Those would be the candidates in the, uh, in the election for a leader, for El Presidente's role. Uh, I mean, come on. Uh, this, there's no solving the, the crisis. The other problem, Haiti is densely populated. It is so infrastructurally backwards and in a quake-prone zone, by the way, that it would take an enormous amount of investment to uh, repair the infrastructure and, and raise the living standard and efficiency, but there's nothing to extract. What, what exactly comes out of Haiti for international trade in order to even pay off the investors that would have to invest in a project to allow you to do the extracting? Mud cookies? The, the, that side of the island is heavily deforested. Uh, has massive unemployment rates. Uh, the population is uh, half literate, uh, quite literally speaking, because there's been uh, no real educational initiatives there that aren't grifts. Like the Red Cross comes in, swears they're building homes. Nobody can ever seem to find one. The Clinton Foundation goes in. Anthony Weiner taking frequent visits to the orphanage, I'm sure, at the time. What exactly has been solved? Uh, the Biden admin and the Trump admin and the Obama admin combined have all failed on the issue of Haiti. It is one of the things that Trump didn't even bother talking about, though. He's too busy off in North Korea, so we'll give him a pass because he just didn't even fucking try. Obama attempted to get involved. It made it worse. Biden apparently making it worse this time around. Probably are better leaving him alone to their own devices. Uh, <laughs> again... What solution, what pragmatic solution can you think of that would make Haiti a better place? I can't think of anyone, anything. Um, unless you wanted to have an external group occupy the half of the island, occupy Haiti, uh, and, and force reform at its, at its own great expense. You'd have to have a military occupation. You'd have to redesign the entirety of the infrastructure. And then it might all get destroyed by an earthquake five years later. It's like building a, a fucking sandcastle uh, too close to the surf. It's just not going to work. So yeah, Haiti is collapsing, and the former envoy blames Biden squarely for it. Again, not that it wouldn't be having massive problems under any other reasonable circumstances. There's basically it's, there's nothing to do with Haiti at this point. I hate to tell you this, but there is no solution. Haiti is probably not going to get better. It's just logistically, it's uh, not something that a wise person would bother to undertake. But you know, there was a deal with the devil. It does seem, I, I read the article, and normally I'd be like, well, this is just like your opinion, ma'am. But then again, I do look at the differential between how the Haitian immigrants were treated virtual, and virtually every other group of people and the timing involved with that clearing out of the migrants and Haiti saying, oh yeah, they can come back, that's perfectly fine. That is one hell of a coincidence from a Biden administration that doesn't deport anybody else. So I, I think the article is actually factual. That's about all. Peace out.